Hey guys, and welcome to my new YouTube channel, Craft Classy. I am new to all of this, as you will be able to tell, but I've already learned so much just making this first video. So if you'll stick with me, the audio and video skills will improve as time goes on. I'm all about doing crafts on a budget using Dollar Tree or nearly free supplies. So let's jump into it. For this first craft, you will need a wooden round. Mine is um, 12 inches. You can find them on Amazon, at any craft store, and you can use any size that you'd like. You'll also need the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and large wooden beads. You can find them at any craft store. I found them at a thrift store in a bin um, for 30 cents. You will also need um, either paint or um, Waverly. I'm using Waverly Antique Wax. I've um, applied the wax on one side and wiped it off already and now I'm starting on the other side. Just um, apply a fairly generous amount, brush it on evenly, and then we will let it sit and wipe away the excess. We will do the same thing to each tumbling tower block. I find that it's best to let the antique wax sit for a little bit before wiping off the excess. Now we're going to be using just some Elmer's wood glue. Using a paintbrush, I'm just adhering each tumbling tower block around the edges of the wood circle. You can see I applied a little too much glue and had to wipe away the excess. I didn't need that much. You'll just sit each block on the edge of the circle to where it doesn't hang over the edge. Here we are at the end of the first row, and we're going to be making two rows. Um, you can make as many rows as you'd like. That will determine the height of the edges of your tray. As you go to start the second row, you will just place the first one over the seam of the first row. 
um, sort of a brick laying pattern. You can see here that I have placed some heavy objects on top of the tray to just um, hold it down to help. It is very sturdy. The wood glue does a very good job at holding things together. And now we will attach our feet. The glue has dried and everything feels very sturdy. And now all that's left to do is to seal it. And I'll be using um, a satin mod, mod podge. And there is the final result. I like how it resembles a basket weave. Some decorative eggs for Easter or spring decor. Um, I have these eggs that um, were getting kind of old. I got them from my parents' chickens. Um, you might have some extra eggs or some that are going bad, um, and then you can you could blow you can blow them out to, and um, dry them to um, make decorative eggs that can sit around on your counter. So we'll just need eggs, some push pins and a straw for this. And what you'll be doing is piercing the top and the bottom of, the, of each egg. And then you will take a straw and blow into one hole and, it, and then the egg will come out the other end of the egg. If you do not have access to, um, you know, these um, farm fresh eggs that are that are brown or green or different colors, um, white might work better for your decor, for your style of home, for your colors. Um, just whatever you have on hand, whatever you want to use. So you can see here that I'm piercing top of, of the egg and I found that only one of the holes needs to be um, um, made a little bit bigger. The size of the hole that you're blowing into does not have to be that big but then obviously where the egg is going to come out needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, I then took a toothpick as you just saw, and um, stuck it into the egg and sort of scrambled the egg a little bit to break the yolk and to make it easier um, to come out. And you can see here, as easy as that, um, the egg starts to come out. It does take some patience, it takes a little while. But then once you have the egg empty, you will put it on a baking sheet and bake it um, on a very low temperature 
for like 15 minutes. The lowest temperature that your oven can go. Now I have here some trans rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. And um, the eggs are beautiful as they are, but um, I wanted to add a little something extra to it. And I found these rub-on transfers with the Dollar Tree, and I think they're just gorgeous. Um, they're very old-fashioned looking, and I think that it goes well with um, these colored eggs, color of eggs. Um, so you just cut out the transfer that you want. You'll remove the plastic off the top of the transfer, turn the transfer over, and rub with either your, I use my fingernail, or you can use um, a plastic spoon, or you know any type of um, um, object to rub the transfer onto the egg. Do not press too hard, obviously, because um, while eggshells are sturdier than what you would think they are, um, they, you know, if you press too hard, the shell will break, and I had that happen to me once while doing this project. I've seen where people use temporary tattoos to decorate eggs like this. I um, mean, this is just another form of that. I found that these transfers went on very easily and, and just, it, it worked out great. They have different styles of transfers at Dollar Tree. Um, some more modern that, you know, some of you might like better. This was a little butterfly, and I apologize for the um, a video quality here. The exposure is a little high on the egg, but I will show some pictures at the end that show it better. You could certainly paint some plastic eggs and do this same technique with them or the little craft eggs that you can find in the stores. For the next craft, we'll be using twine from the Dollar Tree masking tape, scissors, old newspaper, some hot glue, and greenery of your choice. I use some clippings from a cedar tree in our woods. You can use whatever you'd like. You're just going to take the newspaper and roll it into the general shape of a carrot. I found that the more rustic, more imperfect I made it, the more like a natural carrot shape it looked. You're just going to take the masking tape and wrap it around your carrot shape just to hold the newspaper in place so it doesn't fall apart while you're wrapping the twine around it. As I was trimming up the top of the carrot, I tried to round the edges a bit so it's not such a sharp edge to give something for the twine to climb onto as I'm finishing up the carrot cap.
will take your twine and start gluing it onto your carrot shape, wrapping it around itself. You'll use more hot glue on the ends of your carrot and not as much in the middle of the carrot. But you'll want it, the twine adhered very well at your beginning points and your ending points. Once you get going, it goes pretty quick, and the more carrots you make, the faster you'll be at it. This really was a very easy craft, went by quickly, and cost next to nothing. It would be good to use some finger protectors or gloves to protect your fingers from the hot glue. I just use my fingernails anytime I had to touch the glue to protect my fingers. Once you get to the top of the carrot, you'll probably slow down and be trying to shape your carrot top into a, na a natural, gradual slope, and you'll leave an opening on the end to stick your greenery down into. You can hot glue your greenery before you stick it down into the newspaper, or I just pushed um, the greenery down in there. It held inside there pretty, pretty good. And then that way next year I can just pull out the old greenery and stick in new greenery. You could use green raffia for ribbon or even paint some of this twine green to use as the carrot leaves. Really just about anything. I think something flexible and pliable would work best and have a more natural look as opposed to something stiff. You can leave it the natural color or paint them. I'm going to paint this one white with some watered down white acrylic paint. I found that the watered down white paint looked better than just using the paint without it being watered down. It um, sort of dyed the twine as opposed to just plastering it on the surface of the twine. I felt it looked better. And the more coats you do, or the thicker your paint, the um, more white it will be. You can leave it you know, very rustic with some of the twine color showing through or make it very white. It's completely up to you and what you like. I also painted one orange and I left one the natural twine color. I will put a supply list in the description box below the video and include the paint colors that I used.
thank you so much for watching. If you would, subscribe to my channel. It would really help my channel out. Thank you for your patience, and I look forward to improving and bringing more craft videos here to this channel every week. Thank you.